Today we're looking how regenerative brakes work in an electric car and why it's brilliant. To appreciate the regenerative braking system, or RBS, just remember the last time you rode a conventional bicycle. You pedal to get yourself going, you build up kinetic energy, but each time you brake and come to a stop, you lose all the momentum you gained. That's because when the brake rubber pads clamp on the wheel, it causes friction. The friction converts the kinetic energy into heat, which disappears into the air. So all that energy gets wasted. And to get going, you have to start pedaling again and build up kinetic energy from scratch. It's the same when you're in stop and go traffic in a conventional car. Your car wastes a lot of energy because it takes a lot of power to get the car moving. Each time you hit your brakes, all the kinetic energy your car gained gets wasted in the brake pads as heat. And that's where the brilliance of regenerative braking in the electrical vehicle comes in. Rather than allowing the kinetic energy you built up to go to waste, a regenerative brake, in essence, puts the energy to the side so that you can use the energy again at a later time. So how does it store energy? Put simply, it converts kinetic energy into electricity, which then gets stored in the battery. This is brilliant because electricity is a very high grade of energy that can be easily changed into many other forms. Heat, on the other hand, is low grade energy that's harder to reuse in other ways. So how does RBS work? Before we get to that, thanks so much for your positive comments on my previous videos. That said, YouTube stats for my channel show that 90% of viewers watch but forget to subscribe. So if you like my content, please feel free to subscribe. Your support helps me to continue producing more educational content like this. Thanks again for your support. And now, how does RBS work? When you're driving your EV, energy flows from the battery to the motor. This turns the wheels and provides the kinetic energy so that the car can move. But when you hit the brakes, the entire process goes into reverse. Electronic circuits disconnect the power to the motors and the wheels drive the motors, like the tail wagging the dog. The motors start working like generators. So instead of the motors consuming electricity, now they're producing it. Power flows back from the motors to recharge the main battery pack which in turn extends your car's driving range between charges. And that's how regenerative brakes allow you to recapture much of the braking energy you'd otherwise lose. But it's not 100%. That's because it takes time for regenerative brakes to slow down a car. That's the reason why most EVs also have conventional hydraulic brakes that work alongside the regenerative brakes. And that's a good thing, in case the regenerative brakes were to fail. Since the RBS helps slow down the car, this means less wear and tear on your conventional brakes. Regeneration occurs when you apply the brake pedal, but it also occurs when you release the accelerator pedal and your car is coasting. Some cars even have an automatic cruise control system that uses regenerative brakes to adjust your car speed on the road as needed. There are several metrics to measure the regenerative braking system, for example, how much energy can regenerative brakes save? How much electricity does it generate? Or how much driving range can it increase? In general, some 60 to 70% of kinetic energy that would otherwise be lost during braking can be recaptured and stored for future use. It all depends on various factors like the car you have, your car's speed, how long you apply the brakes, and the level of braking force. Also, the heavier and faster the car is, the more kinetic energy you can build up, so you have a lot more energy to potentially recapture and save. For example, a modern electric train is very large and heavy and can achieve super high speeds. That's why it benefits from the most savings from regenerative brakes compared to other vehicles. This results in about 15 to 20% range increase. A large delivery truck is obviously smaller than an electric train, but is still heavier and faster than a passenger EV its average range increase can be about 12%. A typical passenger electric or hybrid car's range can increase by an average of 10%, depending on the car and whether you're driving in the city or the highway. An electric bike is much smaller, lighter, and slower in comparison, so logically its energy savings are less optimistic. Its range increase is minimal in the low single digits. That's why most electric bikes don't come with regenerative brakes. If you ever see an advertisement for a new electric bike with regenerative brakes, it's more a marketing ploy than a valuable feature. 
In reality, you'll be paying more for breaks that'll give you very little benefit, or even work against you by consuming more energy rather than saving. That's because regenerative brakes work optimally when the electric motor is always engaged, whether as a motor or a generator. That's why it's beneficial for an EV. But people's behavior on an electric bike is different. An average cyclist engages his motor only part of the time and happily just coasts for the rest. So there's not much energy you generate and therefore not much to salvage. What if you engage your bike motor all the time? Well, the problem is that kinetic energy output is still relatively low compared to the total energy you'd consume if you were to engage the motor permanently. In other words, you won't save any energy at all, but rather consume more energy. Some EVs allow the drivers to select how much regenerative braking to use. Typically in those cars, you just move the gear shift lever while slowing down. This function is usually called one pedal driving. It requires practice. But once you get the hang of it, you can get through heavy traffic by just using the throttle. You simply accelerate through to move ahead as needed. When you need to make a stop, you just let go of the throttle and let the regenerator brakes bring the car to a stop. This is the electromagnetic regenerative braking system. It's the most commonly used type of RBS today. Here is the drive shaft. Here is the electric generator. When you apply your brakes, the generator uses magnetic fields to restrict the car shaft's rotation to slow down the car. It also generates electricity, which gets sent back to the battery. There are other different types of regenerative braking systems. Each differ by method of energy conversion and storage. Regenerative braking is more valuable for electric cars, hybrids, and larger vehicles, rather than small personal vehicles like electric bikes or scooters. That said, RBS has drawbacks too. For example, if you're driving your EV at a low speed or you're in stop and go traffic, then it can't recapture much energy. So if your daily commute has you in rush hour most of the time, then your EV won't see as much benefit from regenerative braking than you would in other driving scenarios. A disadvantage with some regenerative braking systems is that they change how the brake pedal feels. It depends on the car. But with some cars, you might feel a lag or delayed response. Some others find it challenging to modulate for smoother braking. But newer systems are performing better, and they're getting more natural in feeling. Well, there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support, and see you next time.